All right, what's up, everybody? In this video, we want to talk about Amon Ross St. Brown. I think he's a guy that every Lions fan gets excited about, especially if you watch the back half of last season. But, Chris, the question I have for you is how good is he? Mm, oh, good question. So if you look at the last six games, he's really, really good. And I think there's some things to take away from those last six games. It, it wasn't that he caught – um, one 80 yard bomb or one 75, you know, he, it was over the middle. It was deep. It was handoffs. It was short yardage. It was yep. short catches. I mean, we just saw it with our eyes. I think that's why we're so excited about him is this isn't a stat line thing where you just, he, he happened to go off a couple times, miss blown coverage. It was, I saw him do about eight different things. He can go short, long, deep catch passes. So, or take handoffs. So that is why I'm so excited about him. And I think he can be, really good. Where, where are you at with him just in general uh, before we compare him to maybe Debo? Yeah. So where I'm at with him is those last six games. I like what you're saying. Let's read off the amount of catches he has. Yes. All right. So here's the thing. It was 10, eight, eight, nine, eight, eight. And here's what I love more about that. The completion or catch percentage in those games. 83.3, 67, 73, 82, 73, 80. So that means when he was being thrown the ball, the quarterback was completing it at a ridiculous clip of like 75 to 77%. Yep. So it was, like you said, there was some over the middle routes. There were some deeper routes, but there were a lot of underneath routes that relied on him getting yak yards. And he was still getting enough yards to be, really good I it was just the last six games he was one of the best and so I just I don't know if it's enough of a sample size but you did say let's talk about what stood out to me before we compare him to Debo mm -hmm. so what are you seeing in comparison to a guy like Debo Samuel for the 49ers who this year just went off you, you know the the thing I see is their physicality and when I bring that up, I bring it up because that allows you to go across the middle receiving allows you to take handoffs, be versatile, but yet fast enough to take end arounds and different things like that. Sure. But you have to be physical and tough and like Debo, you just look at him, man, like, Hey, can I, like, that's the build I want to be. If there's any way, like, how do you, how do you do that? Like, yeah. just, I mean, he's thick. He just looks like he doesn't look overly bulky, but you can tell he's thick and physical. Well, that's what. Amon Ra, like he doesn't really look like that. It looks a little smaller, but we saw him be very physical, very strong. Yep. And it's like, that is the comparison. We can look at the numbers here in a second, but for me, just that ability to be quick enough to do what you need to do outside, but be physical and strong enough inside too is like, man, that is awesome to have. And that's where I see them kind of compare. Yeah. And the way I see him compare to is they can beat you at all, all levels. So in the passing game, yep. they're not as effective on the deep routes, but they do well. Like, mm -hmm. it's not like they're bad at it over, over the middle. They're good. Um, in the mid range game, they're good in the short passes. They're good. And they both can run the ball a little bit. I mean, there were times where Monra even lined up in the backfield and we know Debo carried the rock often. Yeah. So especially this last year and into the playoffs, um, I wouldn't love to see, uh, Amon Ra get 60 carries like Debo did last year. That's like asking for him to get hurt. Yes. Um, so I'm not a big fan of that, but here's what I like. So at the same point in their careers, and what I'm saying is Debo Samuel from year one to year two, right? And we can see some of the stats there, right? I mean, year one, year two, there were some injuries. So, and year three yeah. really kind of took off. Um, Amon Ross St. Brown at this point in his career has a much better feel for the game. Debo Samuel really kind of relied on that physical nature of being a wide receiver and just mm -hmm. being a little bit stronger, having a running back body and a wide receiver, six mm -hmm. foot, 215, right? And Amon Ross St. Brown isn't quite as big. I'm not going to say he's more shifty, but at this point in his career, he has a better understanding of where space is and how to get to the corner and what to do in order to get open and find those gaps, whether it's zone defense, whether it's cutting off quick against man coverage, like he just seems to have a phenomenal feel for the game. I agree. And, and I thought what you were going to say is like, it feels like St. Brown's floor is already a little higher. And maybe you, we are okay. kind of saying the same thing where, yeah, you saw Debo in these stats kind of, he, he did have injury in 2020, but, 
yeah, just got better and it's really exploded in 2021. So it's like, I yeah. just expect him if St. Brown does a little bit better each year, obviously like his floor is already, he's, he's just really good. And you and I, yeah. you, you and I, you're bringing up points about how he, he knows the game. He's got a good feel. I, I, I do feel like that. It just feels like he knows a little bit more footwork type stuff early on and hopefully he can keep improving on that. So yeah, it that, just, I, it just yeah. feels like his floor is a guy that is a slot receiver um, that gets 60 to 70 catches a year. I, I mean, like that feels like that's his floor when he's on a loaded team and I'll take that floor all day. Oh. Like I will absolutely take that floor all day. And and I don't know if uh, we're over hyping that six games and what is he going to look like when the book's kind of out on him, but what can he do? I think that's my big question. Right. What can't he do? Right. I, I just have a hard time believing, boy, St. Brown couldn't get open. He couldn't figure it out. They couldn't get it to him. I mean, right. not game after game. I just feel like this he's going to, in especially we're going to scheme things up for him specifically. So we're going to get in his hands. You're so right on that floor. It's like, yeah, this guy, just a bad, he doesn't end up really doing much. I mean, he's going to catch 50 plus balls all day long yeah. easily and just be a great inside guy because again we we are developing and have those outside guys so all of a sudden our offense and that's where you that's where it really gets exciting because you just it's not just St. Brown it's like oh Hawkinson in there too outside guys offensive line and so that's where but he's the, really the guy that's like that secret ingredient that um we shouldn't have but we do got him in the fourth round and we all just kind of like and so he's the guy that's getting it going and then the rest of the offense just looks good man he's the guy that makes engine run uh, the engine run in all good passing offenses mm -hmm. i mean find a passing offense that doesn't have a guy that's good in space that right. doesn't have a guy that can just go out and get you a catch yeah you know, I, I mean every offense has it and i look at the lions offenses of the past even the calvin johnson ones who is our in the middle guy? Who is our right. slot receiver? I mean, we were trying so hard. I mean, I remember we threw flyers out there on Titus Young, right? And he had all the legal trouble. I mean, for a while. Amendola. I mean, we had just. Amendola. <laughs> like, there was just Azahir Akeem. Or, like, remember oh, from, wow. from the Rams, the greatest show on turf. Oh, he's going to come to the Lions and do some work. It's just, it feels like our slot receiver has been guys who are really good at either not actually being slot receivers or just really good at dropping the ball a lot and so to have a guy that is sure hands you can rely on he's going to be in the right place at the right time that's how you get good completion percentage yes. when you have a wide receiver and a quarterback that are both reading the defense at an efficient clip and, and to that point how nice would it be you said you said that the receiver uh, you need a receiver like this in a successful offense and i totally agree because how many times tom brady or peyton manning when it's man coverage, third and four, they know it's man coverage and they know that their guy is just going to make it boom, 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 wiggle. And it's just like, and, and I just remember getting so frustrated, like zone, or I don't know, but it's like, no, I know it's man, right? So when you know it's man and you have a guy that's going to win, there we go. Percentage. It's over. Completion. Yeah. It's over. <laughs> Every team needs a good slot receiver that can win man coverage when they get a mismatch. And yep. if you have every guy who wins, because you're going to have to put a linebacker on somebody, you're going to have to put a safety on somebody. So if you are confident that Chark, Williams, Amonra, Hawk, like if you're confident that one of these guys is going to beat that safety or that linebacker, like, okay, there it is. Okay. I know where I'm going. And first down. Zone, first down. <laughs> First down. Thank you. Like, and, mm. and that's, and that's just something we haven't had in the past. We've had the, we've had the just greatest receiver possibly, you know, of our generate Jerry yeah. Rice. Okay. Is the greatest of all time, but we had Calvin who might be the most dominant receiver we've ever seen and physically dominant. Great. We know where the ball is going. He's double teamed. He still made plays, but how nice is it to know that like, Oh, you have multiple guys who can make a play for you in multiple ways. Absolutely. And that's what the, the, Kelvin Johnson era was so frustrating. Loved him. Loved the dynamic oh, yeah. plays. Loved it. But yeah, loved that him. just you and I have talked about it and you were the first one to show me like you got to get open. Like you you can't just throw it up 50-50 balls or like if you're a receiver, you got to get open. And no yep. Kelvin was I love him. But yeah, it was just like they're he's double teamed. I kind of I kind of have to still throw it to him. I he's covered. And usually I, it I works don't. out. Yeah, so it really does. Like, 
how about a guy that can just really create separation? What if we had a couple of those guys? I mean, that and and again, you don't have to throw it to a certain guy because he's so dominant. It's like I gotta throw it them. No, it's like we can spread it out. We have guys beating their man. I mean, it's just that's what excites us. And St. Brown is like the epitome of it. He can just move so quick, get in and out of breaks, and it's like Man, just we we can guys that can win one on one matchups, move the chains, and just we have not had that. It's been too hard. Yeah. And there's different ways to create separation. And it feels like he creates other than blazing speed, which he doesn't have blazing speed. He's not slow, but he doesn't have blazing speed. Other than that, it feels like he knows how to create separation in every other way. Mm -hmm. Um, exactly. whether it's reading the defense, finding the hole in the zone, um, off a cut, uh, double move. Uh, yeah, I mean, like it feels like in any other way he can create separation, what makes it really good. Um, obviously we like Amonra St. Brown and we like what he could be not because he's just going to be a superstar stud athlete of a wide receiver, but because he does all the little things right while being an above average athlete at the wide mm -hmm. receiver position. So, uh, you got anything else for everybody? Or are you good? I'm good. All right. Hey, if you like this channel, hit that subscribe button below. Leave a comment. Are we drinking too much uh, Kool-Aid on Amon Ross St. Brown or are you with us? Do you just feel like this guy is a can't miss uh, going forward if he stays healthy? We'll see you on the next one. See you.